So we're back for another one of my model kit reviews, and this is going to be another one in the um, series on the ME109 and ME109 variants. And if you haven't seen the first two videos, link up above there is for the Tamiya um, BF109 E4 E7 Trop. And in that video, you'll find the link to the Edward uh, ME109 G6 Late Overtrees. Uh, both very interesting kits, worth a watch if you're thinking of getting those kits. Um, so as I said, this is going to be, you've seen the two 109s up there, the one before, and now we're going to look at some 109 variants. And uh, there weren't a lot of variants per se, but these are two kits that I've, uh, I've wanted for a while to flesh out my 109 collection. Um, and they're getting very difficult to find these days uh, because the company is no longer in business. Uh, but uh, without further ado, we'll get into it. Most of you have probably read the title already, so you know where this is going. It is the Hobbycraft 148 scale Hispano HA1112 Bouchon. A uh, bit of a backstory on the Bouchon. So, uh, <clears throat> very similar to other especially like American or British uh, in World War II, the aircraft weren't built by one company. They were subcontracted subcontracted out. So the same way that like Hawker Hurricanes were also built by Canada Car and Foundry and the Harvards were built by Canada Car and Foundry and uh, Catalinas were built by Vickers Canada and Lancasters were built by Avro Canada and B-17s were built by Lockheed Vega and uh, Corsairs were built by Goodyear and all of these other like, P-47s were built by Curtis. So all of these, these, um, sorry, Corsairs, Vought Corsairs were built by Goodyear and Curtis built, um, um, I lost my train of thought, Curtis built, uh, P-47s under contract. So all these aircraft got built by other sub, other contractors who could spread the work out and build them faster. And the same was with the Germans. So... The, the ME-109 during World War II was also built by Hispano as well as Avia, and uh, we'll see one of those in a little bit, so stay tuned, uh, foreshadowing there. Um, so Hispano built 109s under license in Spain, and the aircraft were then sent into um, Germany to be used by the Germans. Um, they were the G6 model, the later version of the 109. And when the war ended, they lost a source of their, let's see if I get this right, Daimler-Benz. Uh, they had the Daimler-Benz engine on the 109. And when the war ended and Germany collapsed, they lost their source of Daimler-Benz engines. But they still had the tooling for the fuselages. So what they did is they merged the 109 with a Merlin engine, which were relatively easy to come by. Um, you'll also see that with the... Um, uh, HE-111, the CASA, that was built under license in Spain. Spain. They also used Merlin engines. And these were the same models that were used at the filming of the Battle of Britain. The, Ca the Bouchon and the CASA Merlin-engined uh, HE-111. Um, so, uh, they, Hobbycraft released the kit. It's a dated kit. Um, and it was re-released later on. I believe it was a re-release uh, by uh, Edward. Not by Edward, sorry, by E... I want to see it was a tallery. I'll do the research and I'll post something here to uh, clarify my, my memory here. Um, but they were released, by, I believe it was this kit that was released by another company. And that was the only way you could get a Bouchon short of doing a real kind of hodgepodge with the kits. Unfortunately, it suffers from the same problem with detail that all the Hobbycraft kits have. And that is that there is none. Um, very basic kit. Um, they, they, Hobbycraft was a very interesting company because their kits, for lack of better term, are junk. Um, very little detail, soft moldings, quite a bit of inaccuracies in terms of shape and size. But at the time, and even to this day, they were releasing kits that you almost couldn't find anywhere else. Things like the Mark 15 Seafire and the Bouchons and the Avias and things like, you know, uh, one CF-100s and CF-105 arrows and beavers and otters and dash eights and it's just there were content you didn't see anywhere else at the time and to some extent even to like the tutor those 148 scale tutors are going for like almost 200 dollars now because how hobbycraft doesn't make them and nobody else does and it's the only source for a 148 scale tutor so they're worth their weight in literal gold um so yeah it's it's a very interesting dilemma and i wish somebody would be able to find the molds for Hobbycraft and start popping these things out again. But a bit of a backstory on Hobbycraft. So that being said, this is their kit of the Bouchon. Uh, and just for 
the sake of the kit. I'll find a copyright, if there is one on here, for when this kit was built. And I don't know if I'm going to find one. I don't see, there's nothing on the instructions for a copyright. I don't know if I'll find anything on the sprues, but if I do find anything, I will let you know. But um, yeah, definitely I'm talking probably mid to mid nineties, I probably want to say, maybe even earlier when these things were built. I'd have to do again, the research online and I'll post something up here with the actual answer that I'm just trying to come up with in my mind. Um, so we'll start Thank with the plastic, and as I said, it's pretty soft detailing. In any of the um, there are engraved panel lines, which is relatively, I, I mean, for the time it was a pretty advanced molding. Uh, I mean, you were still getting monogram kits that were pumped out with raised detailing at this time. So that's a bit of a nice extra to it. if you're interested in any of this content, please click the subscribe People knock it a lot, but I mean, you do get, you know, quite a bit of... of you know, some some of the detail in here is not horrible, um, but I mean, it could be a lot better. Um, so, being the, the Bouchon, it does have the Merlin engine on the front, so you can't really make a 109 out of this. It isn't a modular design, it was made in the mold like this. Um, you can kind of, if you really look closely on it, you can sort of see in here where there was the remnants of what I'm assuming was, you can actually see the engraving that was made, um, the measuring lines that were used to lay everything out. You can see the engravings where people had gone through and hand tooled and hand carved and made the changes to make that modification. But um, as mentioned, it is the only way to get um, the bouchon. So, Starting here with the, uh, I'll move this out of the way so you can actually see what I'm pointing at. Uh, you get the two fuselage halves here. This is sprue B. As I said, the Merlin uh, cowlings are uh, one integral piece with the fuselage. You get the uh, covers here at the go across the top for the cylinder heads, the bulges in the cowling. Part of your under engine intake is here. You also, can, this is a good example. You see the intake, it's just, it's just flat. There should be an opening here where it goes down inside for the, the, the um, carb but it's just a solid black line so you just have to paint it black or carve it out and go through the effort of making it look good but it, it just takes effort so this is i believe is the rear of the cowling uh, underneath the wing um, the exhaust stacks some antennas and machine guns these are the um, um the bouchon in and of itself did not have the horizontal stabilizers with the little tiny strut because it was a G6 model, that wasn't part of the design. However, when they used them in the filming of the Battle of Britain, they added them in uh, just to make it look like an earlier 109 um, for the movie. So they give you the option. There was a boxing of this that was released with the fake German markings that were worn in the filming of the movie Battle of Britain. Um, so you can actually do up the kit in those markings if you have that boxing. This particular kit doesn't have those boxings, but they include the struts to be added if you choose to go that route. You've also got the underwing rockets pods, and the rockets are over here. Um, the Spanish did have these rocket uh, rockets uh, mounted on them. Uh, you've also got the wing fences, the prop spinner, the prop itself, some more of the machine guns and little bits and bobs for the design. I'm not even sure what these are. I'll have to look at the instructions and figure that out. Inside the cockpit you get some detailing but very minimal. The, the fuselage sides are just bare plastic. There's no internal forming at all. Uh, so it is the bare minimum they needed to do to, to make a model. Uh, the wings are pretty much standard uh, G6 wings. Uh, again, you'll notice there's no um, flaps are integral. The slats are integral. There's no way of building it with the flaps up or down. Or sorry, with the flaps down, they have to be up. Wheels are not horrible. They've got some nice detail in the uh, um, wheel cover. The rims, the tire treads are nice. They are solid tires, uh, so you don't get a nasty seam. There's a little bit of a mold seam you have to clean up but there's no actual seam where the two wheel halves have to fit together. Uh, so it's a bit easier to do that. Inside the wheel wells is pretty basic. You'll see in the top of the wing, there's nothing there to show the structure. In the top of the wheel well, it's just flat. So again, it's it's pretty basic, even for its own time. Um, you know, you definitely have seen 
quite a bit more effort put into other kits, whereas this is a very basic kit. Uh, moving on to sprue A, um, you got some of the interior parts. So these are on the wings. Um, I believe those are the covers where the cannons go on the wings. Uh, this is part of the cockpit, some of the, the, the stick, the uh, trim wheel, your landing gear doors. You get some more little antennas and whatnot here, the instrument panel. The instrument panel is actually not that bad. Um, it's got some, you can see all the little dials and it's pretty nice. A bit of dry brushing and that should pop nicely. Uh, the bits and pieces for the cockpit. The cockpit itself isn't horrible. There's a little bit of detailing here. Floor is pretty basic, um, but again, with a little bit of work, you might be able to tease something out of here that would look decent. It's definitely not something you're gonna build with the cockpit open. You're definitely gonna have the cockpit closed on this thing to hide the lack of a cock of, a, of the detail. Um, you also get the two different style uh, engine exhaust. You got the earlier Merlin style uh, rounded exhaust on this one. And over here you got the uh, fishtail design. Again, they're pretty basic. There's no opening, There's no. they're just squared off. They don't have the flared rounded edges that you would see on a normal fishtail exhaust. Um, you've also got the different spinner, so as whereas this is the Bouchon specific um, sprue that has the Merlin round exhaust and the four bladed prop, this is a, a 109, and I bet you if you look on the back, it says, yeah, CBF 109 GKAH, so this is a, a standard ME 109 sheet, which includes the 109 exhausts as well as the three bladed 109 propeller and drop tank that wasn't used on the Bouchon, because this is your standard um, Metrosmith sheet, and then your wing would be depending on um, what model you want to build, and this is the fuselage sprue that was specific to the Bouchon. I almost guarantee you the plastic is probably a slightly different, yeah, plastic is just a slightly different mold shape, uh, color, and, and texture, because it was pumped out at a different time from that. So I mean that's that's the kit basically right there. So there's not a lot included. Uh, the clear parts are pretty basic, and as you see that they don't come packaged in plastic or anything. So um, the clear parts are just sort of loose in the box. I'm still looking to see if there's any. Um, any uh, dates or anything on here. I don't think there is any dates at all. So either, other than, if I put the date up earlier in the video, then go with that date, but um, not a lot to go on. So the Bouchon pieces actually are bigger than the size of the box. They don't quite fit properly. So they have to kind of be jammed into the box, which isn't ideal. Uh, clear bits, uh, not horrible. Um, Pretty clear, actually. Uh, no, not really, not a lot of distortion. Uh, you get the rear um, window, the uh, coffin-style cockpit, the forward uh, windscreen, and you also get the um, armor plating. Um, and you can also see how the way the sprue is cut. There'd be a gate, and you would get the early-style canopy. Or on this side, probably the late style canopy, depending on what model. You can see on the side, um, there is a later style G6 that has the later style canopy. And here we go, here the K. So my guess is that's how it works. There's a central, this part here with the forward windscreen, the gun sight, and the armor plate. And then depending on how it's, is it cut or is it, it looks like it's cut. They probably mold it all as one and then cut off the canopy that isn't designed for that specific boxing. So this does include the earlier style. There were boxings that included the later style. Take a quick look at the instructions. You'll get a good feel for how basic the kit is looking at the instructions. Um, pretty simple um, start. Section one is the cockpit. So you'll see um, cockpit base, the seat pan. Uh, there isn't even a back to the seat. It's molded into the, the into the, the cockpit, uh, your stick, your rudder pedals, and your cannon mount uh, if you install it. Technically, this model probably wouldn't have that in. I'd have to look at pictures to see if that was still included. I don't, I don't know. Section two here, you drill out for um, the upper wings for some of the uh, wing fences and cannon covers. 
and the bottom if you choose to mount the um, rocket pods. Three, some of the interior cockpit parts, kind of installing the uh, um, wheel that goes in place. And then also down here it shows you how the instrument panel and all that pieces align in the cockpit so you can get everything lined up properly. And you glue the fuselage together and you get your exhaust stacks glued in. And uh, if you look here, it shows you how to kind of align the exhaust 90 degrees to the center line, not to the fuselage. Uh, little little details like that do, do help building. Um, spot four, section four, step four is quite a bit going on. Um, you've got your horizontal stabs going in place. You've got your canopy going in place. Again, I would recommend waiting a bit for that, but instructions are as they are. You see the, the, the um, flared... Uh, cowling covers go on here, your intake goes on, your wing gets glued on, there are those covers for the wheel wells that go on, your wing fences go on, there's those parts I wasn't sure what they were, they're the cannon mounts on the wing, so they get assembled and put on with the front of the wings, and here it even shows you how to mount them, because there's no holes or mounting pins, you just kind of assemble everything and then you line it up um, with this panel line, you see it's four millimeters in from the panel line is where the center of that goes, so you just kind of have to do your best to, to eye it out and get it lined up correctly. Step five is your gear. Uh, it's a very simple main door onto your main gear, onto your wheel. And you can see here, it kind of shows you the uh, um, degrees. Your wheel should be 15 degrees off of your leg and your leg should be 21 degrees off of vertical. So you gotta make sure everything is oriented in there just right. I would eyeball it, to be honest. You can probably hold the piece against this instructions and kind of eyeball it that way instead of getting up there and kind of measure it all. Step six, um, you glue in the landing gear on, some of your underwing antennas, that rear cowling piece, uh, the mass balances, the tail wheel, um, as well as your rockets if you decide to go that route. Step seven, prop and the antenna, and then here it shows you where to mount that antenna. Uh, 2.5 mils in front of this one panel line and dead center on the fuselage. So it does give you a little bit of help to align everything, which is nice. Then we move into the color schemes. There's a few different options. Um, the one here is probably the one I'm going to do. Um, the uh, C4K156, and it's a silver over light blue scheme um, with the X on the tail. It's just the, that's, that's that classic Bouchon scheme that they had in service. There's this one down here, which is a, a dark blue. Sometimes it looks purple. Uh, the official color was dark blue. So overall dark blue with the white tail and the full color Spanish roundels. And that's a C4K17. And then a couple of other options in the back here. You've also got uh, this one here, 162. Um, and it was um, basically a gray green over... Um, dark green with the the, uh, the light blue bottom, very similar to how the 109s would have been painted. Um, the same colors, effectively, that they would have painted them, um, you know, in World War II, the same sort of German colors, but in a bit of a more modern take on the scheme uh, in the immediate post-war. Um, actually, this was 1985. I didn't think they flew them that late. It must have been uh, maybe a warbird or something that was flying in 1985. I'll have to do the research on that one. Finally, another one that's all dark blue. Uh, similar to the previous one, it's just a different serial number, and they're not entirely sure uh, what the serial number is on that one, but it's just another option, because over here you can see it's 710, and here it's 762, so it's just a different serial number. And then here it shows you all of the locations for your stencils that get installed. Um, there's a couple, not a lot, but a few. It's interesting that they, um, they've they I'll show you when I get the, actually I'll get the detail sheet now. Um, so the decal sheet itself isn't bad. I'm not entirely sure how well these are going to hold up um, over the years. They seem a little aged. Uh, but you've got your basic round, the larger roundels uh, for the other schemes. The smaller roundels are for this camo scheme. You've got your tail decals here. And you have the option of either the white and black or just the blacks. So you can paint the rudder white and use just the black X or use the decal. I'm probably going to go with the painting option. You've got all your numbers um, for all of your fuselages. Here you've got your no step on the flap. Um, the uh, same thing in white. So you put the black on the light scheme and the white one goes on the darker schemed ones, depending on which scheme you pick. You've got all these options for numbers here. So you can go through and customize the numbers, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you find one online, you basically can make any, um, 
any one of the Spanish flown Hispanos off this sheet. And then the stencils are all down here. What I find really interesting, you can see here where it shows these little rectangles um, getting installed on the control surfaces. And those are these little guys here. And those are actually supposed to be um, locks. It's a piece of wood that slides um, in between the um, um, where you have your seam and you slide it in and it stops your rudder from moving or it stops your elevator from moving because you've slid this thing in between the two the two halves and normally it'd be a block of red wood but it looks like somebody was didn't realize that it was supposed to be a block of wood and maybe it was a museum somewhere and they they, they assumed it was a the picture is that it was a square or like a painted on marking but in reality it's a it's a it's a it's a rudder lock it's a control lock uh, so that's interesting that they've included those. I'll have to look online and see if those pictures, if they actually are marked on like that, showing where you need to put the lock, or if it's actually just a, uh, a mistake by whoever designed the decal sheet. Um, so that's about it for this. As I said, it's it's a uh, very difficult to find the Bouchon. I had to hunt for a while to find this one. Um, always been on my list now to get one of these, so I am glad I did find it. And as I said, I'm probably going to do it up in this silver over blue scheme. Um, and then I'm going to have kind of an evolution of the 109, the 109E, the 109G, and then the Bouchon, and then you'll see the next one I have coming out, uh, which will be out soon, the other version of the 109, and I'm going to have kind of a whole family of 109s. Um, so on that, I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, so that is the 148 scale Hobbycraft Hispano Bouchon. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.